All right, welcome back everybody. Anybody that's new here, thanks for joining me today. Uh, as you can see, I'm out on the lake. Weeds. Top water set up. <laughs> Gonna start this morning with some top water. Um, I have a few ideas for today. Um, I might make more than one video if I can find some fish, but I have one video in mind that's very special. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But first, I gotta try and get some top water blow ups. Um, if you guys are new here, I don't only bass fish. If you guys aren't new here, yes, I still bass fish. <laughs> I've been living on the rivers forever, but uh, I had to take the boat out. It's gonna be dead calm for a while this morning. It's gonna get hot, so I gotta do this quickly. But with it being dead calm, top water blow ups are the best. So we're gonna try that for a little while and see how it goes. All right, I'm gonna start this morning with the, I think that's a live target frog. He's pretty beat up, but that's cause he works. Hopefully we can uh, find some monsters. I mean, catching fish is the goal here. So if you're new, I'm not too stingy about what I catch as long as I'm catching fish, cause that's what fishing's all about. But ideally catch freaks and the biggest ones in the lake. And that's basically why I fish all the time. So. Wish me luck. Okay. Frog's not doing it this morning. I didn't get one follow yet. Um, so I want to switch it up to something I know normally works. And then I also have a popper tied on to my other rod. So if I see any kind of surface activity, I'll start throwing that too. But I'm going to have to switch it up. And uh, I think I'm going to throw a swim bait on and see if I can get some bigger guys coming in on that. We'll see. Hopefully there's still some fish around. Okay, so I'm gonna get my Apex inshore popping rod out and throw this guy around. I put a 25 pound leader on here so I don't get butt off from Northern Pike, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna happen. So hopefully these guys don't bite me off but we'll see. Ooh. That guy missed. <laughs> but he came up for it, so that's good. Let's see if we can get him to come back. Well, that's a northern pike, I think. <laughs> it's a bass. It's a big one. <laughs> oh, it is a bass. It's a big one. <laughs> Just had to get the popper out. That's funny. Wouldn't bite the frog this morning, but... The popper did it. <laughs> Like a two or three, maybe a three pounder. It's a decent fish. Well, this is the first one. This is like a two and a half, maybe three. It's not too, I mean, he's pretty healthy for midsummer. He's still kind of skinny, but all right, let's get this guy back.
Whoa, what was that? Not that guy. Wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, he came off. That was a good one. <sighs> Wasn't paying attention, so I set the hook like a doofus. I didn't tighten my drag down from the last time. <sighs> it scared the crap out of me. Okay guys, I'm not a professional by any means. I can catch fish. I can be proud to say that, but I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a tip here. So I don't know if you guys can see it. There's some stringy uh, pencil reeds up here. Not a thick patch by any means, um, but I know in this water where there's pencil reeds, if there's not a big weed mat in them, that it's usually clear around them. There's po like pockets and stuff. But the thing is, is around the outside of them can be like a brake line. So this could be like a hump of sand and then a brake line that goes down. So instead of just driving up and casting across them, you should always, if you have a boat, canoe, whatever, kayak, fish up to them. So I'm gonna keep casting in increments and working my way up, making further and further cast. Um, that way I don't scare anything away. The water's not necessarily the cleanest, but it's enough that they can see me because it's super shallow. So. There's your best bass fishing tip of the day. Don't run right up on structure like that. Take your time, work your way up to it. What is that? Is that a bass or a northern pike? I don't know what it is. It's pulling really freaking hard. <laughs> I gotta try to keep them out of the weeds around me. I'm in like a pocket. Ooh, looks like a good bass. Out of the weeds. Ugh. Barely hooked him. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna actually weigh this one. I kind of want to benchmark. I think it's about three pounds. Place your bets below your guesses what do you think so kind of next to me so you guys can kind of get an actual size reference three three ten three pounds ten ounces pretty close to four <clears throat> really strong fish and the thing is is this is obviously middle of summer not thick but this fish in the fall and in the spring probably go over four pounds easy. All right, let's get her back. All right, so I threw the frog this morning uh, I started around some weed edges and some weed lines, uh, underwater weed lines. You guys probably couldn't see them. But, so, frog, and then I went to the Kitek swim bait, which I still have swimmed on, or <laughs> swimmed on, tied on because there are other spots. And then sometimes those guys, 
uh, you can follow up with a Kitek versus the top water and they'll hit the Kitek instead. But there's a secret to fishing top water if you want them to commit and that is downsizing sometimes works but what I've noticed is like, so I had a frog on and people say top water's top water, but I'm a firm believer. This is a little, uh, I think it's a rebel. I don't know, I'll figure it out. I'll list it in the description for you guys, but it's a real short one. You can see how small it is compared to the frog this morning. Um, but the big thing here is I, I think that metallic flash, um, I believe these fish in this lake specifically target tiny bluegills and stuff like that on a regular basis. And that's why the Kitek works so well out here. Um, but so if you're fishing a body of water and you have a lot of bait fish, a lot of little bait fish and stuff like that, and you're not getting bites on a frog in the morning, throw one of these guys on and uh, you're good to go. I got that. The cool thing is, is this is my inshore popping rod. I use this as a jerk bait rod in the fall, mainly for my walleye fishing and stuff like that um, and big river stuff. But what I do is I have my main line is a 30 pound braid, but this is a uh, I have it tied together with an FG FG knot I actually have a video for that um, if you guys want to look at my tackle tips and stuff like that but uh so a line to line knot so that way I can tie direct to this and then you know as I cut it down it doesn't matter because I put like 20 like 10 20 yards of that 25 pound P line on there uh, so it's basically invisible to the fish on the surface so that's like ultra finesse so keep that in mind if you guys are struggling and you're doing like a top top water bite in the morning, you really want to get some top water bites. These little rebels and uh, poppers and stuff like that, they work really good. And like I said, I'll list this in the description because obviously today this is what worked. So let's get a bunch more. That's that's a blast. I love watching them blow up out of the water like that. And they get bigger out here. So let's go. Got that guy. Although I think he's barely hooked. Ugh. Another three, four pounder. Guy's healthy. He's been eating. All right, <laughs> a little bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> Got to get back here a little ways. That's a nice fish. Uh, comment below. What do you think this one is? I think this is my third or fourth fish. That's a decent size, but I, I have a feeling this guy's probably going to go at least four pounds. Still big guy. What? It's actually skinnier than the last one. Well, might be shorter, that could be why. Uh, three six. <laughs> three pounds, six ounces. But I mean, it's got the right right idea for the build. Nice heavy body and a smaller head. Get this guy back real quick here. take another one over three that's fun this is <laughs> this is a pretty good day I didn't I was actually not gonna come out today uh, I thought I woke up too late all the fun jazz that goes with being a procrastinator <laughs> hopefully you guys are enjoying this as much as I am because top water is just a blast like literally <laughs> it's so fun you guys like it's so simple so like this isn't a really complicated thing here this is a real simple rod Real simple lure, real simple reel. I mean, this is a nice setup, uh, but you guys can do even cheaper setups if you want. Um, this is working out perfectly. It's the inshore popping. Uh, it's a 7.6 and it's the 904. So IP 904, if you're gonna get it from Tuned Up Customs. Uh, it works great for this these lures. 
Um, and it works really good for jerk baits too. So if you want to kind of multi-purpose a uh, rod, and then this is a 4000 series uh, Abu Garcia. I have them linked in the description uh, if you guys are interested in building this whole thing. And then, like I was saying, I'm running uh, my main line is actually uh, Suffix 832. I think I have that listed in the description. I buy that in bulk in 30 pound test, and then this is a uh, 25 pound test P line as a leader. And then I just did a line to line that. So it's working out great today. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm it, it, sore cheeks from smiling all day. That's a good day. <laughs> Give it a thumbs up if you guys enjoy this stuff. I mean, even if you don't enjoy it, for the respect of me having a good day on the water, I mean, how could you not like it? So remember, like that button. But, uh, I'm not done yet. I think I'm gonna try and catch a couple more. <laughs> All right, they're still biting the popper. Um, so that fish, I was actually in like a little, like a ditch. So there's a nice little hole somewhere. This this lake's really weird. Um, it's super shallow mostly. And then they'll just be like pock marks. Probably, that one was probably a couple hundred feet wide or a hundred feet wide, like hundred feet, hundred feet uh, in a circle. So. It's pretty easy. Go into the middle of it and cast out to the edges, and those fish will sit right on the edge and come up and ambush it. That guy didn't even come out of the surface. He just came up and sucked it down, so I'm okay with that. This is working pretty good, though, right now. I'll list everything below, like I said, if you guys want to do it. Uh, if, you, if you want this inshore popping rod, though, you're going to have to ask for it specifically from Tuned Up Customs. Uh, I don't believe they list it on their site, but... Like I said, I have everything listed below, so check them out, and uh, yeah, let's get some more. I, I'm I'm not having a bad day today. <laughs> Any anytime the bass will come up to the surface and play, I'm I'm having a good time. So it's a little break from the river systems and stuff like that, but we'll be going back there soon enough. But let's catch some more. Woo! That was definitely a northern pike. I got a good clear picture of him like five feet out of the water. Whew. Let's not cast in that direction again. <laughs> he just came in and sucked it up. Just a little guy. These guys are dangerous when you get sharp hooks <laughs> okay thanks buddy I actually hooked that one that's a big northern pike <laughs> oh thank god he came off <laughs> yep Holy crap. So just so you guys understand why you don't want to catch those guys on this. So if I wouldn't have had 20, geez, look at that. So if I wouldn't have had 25 pound test, I probably wouldn't have my lure right now. And I actually have to retie because he bit through my uh, knot. Whew. That was a big Northern Pike though. <sighs> Comment below in the comments. Should I come back here and just like try throwing spinners and all that stuff for northern pike this fall i mean there's a lot of them out here I could definitely pickle a couple of them and it wouldn't be a bad idea but uh let's see if we can stay away from them and actually get a bass on this thing <laughs> that was like the third second or third um that was probably like a 25 or like 26 to 30 inch northern pike pretty heavy too <sighs> do i cast back there now i don't know <laughs> Oh my god, that was huge. That was gigantic. I don't know what that was though. I don't know if I can get him to come back. If it was a northern, it was a giant. If it was a bass, it was a freak. <laughs>
Northern Pike. Give me my lure back, that's all I want. Oh, you little snake. You can come unhooked anytime now. There we go. <laughs> I seen that guy coming from a mile away. That was cool. It's not a giant, but it was fun. It'd be cool to see that with a like a four or five pounder. There's one. Get out of the weeds. I was wondering if I was going to run into any more. Shallow. A bluegill and a big one at that. <laughs> That's different. Never seen one of those out here. <laughs> bluegill on the bass popper. That's kind of cool. All right, guys. So I don't know what I showed you last. Maybe I got that. There was a fish that like came back like three times in like a loop. So like he hit it, the bait went flying up in the air. He hit it again, the bait went flying up in the air. But like he was launching like three feet out of the water every time. And then I finally threw it back there and he like he landed on it, like got it, but fell off. So I don't know if I included that, but that was pretty entertaining. But either way, I wanted to get this to the uh, point to you guys. Um, I know a lot of you guys are very like, specific video-ish type thing like you only fish for one kind of fish i don't do that i fish for everything that swims um right now i'm fishing basically everything in the state of wisconsin because that's where i live but i plan on fishing everything that i can put a hook into <laughs> in the near future so uh if you guys like these videos remember to give them a thumbs up but today was a really good day i used the i think that was a rebel popper um or it was the other one. Um, either way, I'll figure out which one it was because I have uh, have it written down stuff at home. Um, but I'll link it in the description if you guys want to play with those. Obviously, they work. Um, I, the two colors I like to always have on hand is like a black chrome, so it looks like a shiner almost or something like a bait fish of some kind, and a white one. Um, sometimes I'll have a black one too. Those are the three colors I go with. Um, Basically, it's just to keep it simple. Um, your best bet is to just get all three or at least two. So like a black and a white or like a, uh, the white and that chrome one that I've been th throwing all day. The one I threw all day obviously worked. Um, I didn't change up baits because I didn't need to. Um, I was just playing around, having a good day, catching some bass. I think I got three or four uh, over three pounds in Wisconsin. A five pounder is huge. So keep that in mind, you Texas guys. <laughs> All right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you are new, could you please just remember to... <laughs>